The AMS is the best accessory you can get for the Bamboo Lab P2S. And I recently learned that once you have one AMS connected to the P2S, it is super easy to add a second one. So I ordered this a while ago, it's out of stock, just got delivered, and I want to share with you the setup of adding a second AMS. And that's not to say it's super complicated to add multiple AMS units to other bamboo printers, but there's a little more tinkering involved. Once you have one set up, adding a second one is the exact same process as the first. You don't need anything else. So let's see what's in here and get it up and running. And I do keep calling this the AMS, but it's the AMS2 Pro. Hopefully it's not too pro for me. So this looks pretty familiar from when I unboxed the printer itself, the combo kit that had an AMS, but slightly different. But the device itself or the unit itself is exactly the same as this one. We've got a nifty instruction book. And as I learned before, Bamboo's guides and instructions are actually really, really good. So if you ever get stuck, just don't, don't have too much pride. Just read the manual. On the back, we have one tube already taped here. And it looks like there's a couple other things inside. They actually give you a lot of extra stuff. You have all kinds of different lengths of tubing. I'm guessing that's for inside here. You can kind of see this little like hub of tubes. I'm guessing if any of these break or need to be replaced, these are replacement tubes for that. That's cool. And then you have the data power cable for connecting it to the printer. And you actually get two additional desiccant packets, which is cool because there are already some in here. And all that you need to do to use these is take them out of their packages, but don't take out the full open this like delivery package, but don't open this package. And then they can just go back in this little section right here. And now we also get the super satisfying experience of taking off all of this plastic, which is just always fun. So now let's take a little behind the scenes look here at exactly how we need to hook up the second AMS. The one thing I needed to take off was the additional filament spool holder right here, which ran into this connector. We're no longer gonna need that because the new AMS is taking this spot. So that means I should just be able to take off this tape. This tube should run straight into here, no problem. And then the original power cable was too long, so that's actually perfect since this one's not going on top of the printer. I can just connect this here and then just plug the other end into either of these connectors here. So as soon as I connected the AMS, it just powered on automatically and then this popped up. The firmware on my printer is up to date, but now I need to update the firmware on this AMS, which I just opened up. You can see right here, the printer itself is up to date. The original AMS2 is up to date. And now the second one is gonna go from this version to the current up to date version. And are you sure? Yes, I do. Now it said that's gonna take 20 to 30 minutes. It currently says it's 47% finished. We will see. Okay, it took about 30 seconds. Very quick update. And now if I tap okay, everything should be up to date. If I go into my filaments, this is exactly what I wanted to see. I have my original AMS and now I have the new one right here. And that is it. I didn't need to do anything else to get this AMS connected to the printer. And if I load in some filament, it should just automatically read it. We'll put in some TPU, some pink PLA. And now you can see the filament making its way through this longer tube into the printer. The next filament I'm gonna put in here for now is this Neon City Dual Color PLA Silk. This is really cool. You can kind of see the dual color effect here. And this is a phone holder, but it kind of prints out in like this, in this dual color. So it works really well. And I think it looks, it looks super cool. If you've never loaded filament into the AMS before, it is super simple. You just make sure it goes kind of overhand. And then you just push this little part back and put the filament in and it automatically grabs it and that's it. It'll just take a second to like load and register the filament and you're ready to go. And then I have this really nifty galaxy purple. That'll be the last one that I load in here for right now. And that's all there is to it. You can close it, lock it, and you're ready to go. As you would expect, 
on the printer itself, it automatically registered everything because I am using bamboo filament. So all of these have RFID tags in. If you're not using bamboo filament, then you can go into these individual slots and enter the specifications for the filament that you are using. But there's a ton of versatility and practicality to this, which is why I was super excited about it. You have total freedom to mix and match whatever filaments or materials you want in the AMSs. It doesn't have to be like, this is all PLA, this is all ABS, you can mix and match, totally fine. And they don't have to go in any kind of order. So if I'm doing a print, I could use this one here as my main filament and I go all the way over here to this one as the second filament and it'll just switch between them as it needs to. So it really is that simple to add a second AMS to the P2S, but there is one, I wouldn't call it a major limitation. It is a limitation that has a solution, but it's something you should be aware of. When you have two AMS units in this configuration, you can only use the drying feature on one of them at a time. So these have a built-in drying feature to help you take care of your filament, but that takes a lot of power. So if you're using the drying feature in one AMS, you can't then simultaneously use it in the other. And the other bigger part of that limitation is in this configuration, when you're using the drying feature on one of these, you can't print from either of them. So if you're someone who uses the AMS's drying feature a lot, or you plan to, then the way to get around that limitation is just to add a separate power adapter for at least your second AMS, if not both of them, because that really is where that limitation comes from. Right now, both of these AMS units and the printer itself are all running off of the same power supply. Drying heat takes a lot of power. So having both of these use their dryers just isn't really possible, practical or safe. So you can add an external power supply to one or both of the AMS units, and then you don't have that drying limitation anymore. For me right now, that's not really a huge part of my workflow. So I'm not really worried about that. I want the expanded ability to print more things. Having four, let me be clear, if you're jumping into the world of the P2S, having the four spool AMS is amazing. This is purely a luxury. There's a little bit of practicality because it is a good place to store filament. So now I have a safe, great place to store four extra spools of filament. That's a really nice thing. And then just more versatility, being able to print with eight different colors and materials, whatever, whenever I want. It is pretty awesome. And for me, the fact that all of this does only take up one outlet in the wall, one plug is really cool. So I'm okay with that drying limitation. It doesn't really affect my like home hobbyist workflow. But if you're someone who's maybe leaning more into like heavy printing, you do this more for a job kind of thing, you might want to go that more heavy duty route with separate power supplies for everything. So hopefully you see how easy it is to add a second AMS to the P2S Pro. I didn't need to change anything other than just unplugging my external spool holder that I had, connect this, update the firmware, and you're good to go.